So my name is Dominic Adesani. I'm a professional marketer for Intel Corporation and uh, lucid dreamer since my early to mid teens. Um, and with Lucidity Institute, I've been associated with the Institute for oh, probably 10 or 12 years. I'm working more closely as a member of the Institute staff for, we'll say, five years. Within the general um, science of lucid dreaming, we categorize the types of lucid dreams into two um, buckets or categories. One we call DIALDS, which is an acronym for Dream Induced Lucid Dreaming. That means that during the dream, you become aware that you're dreaming and then take control or participate is probably a better way of describing it in the dream. There are particular techniques for trying to stimulate awareness during DIALDS. Stephen LeBurge's mild technique, mnemonically induced lucid dreams, is one very excellent technique for awakening during a dream as it's already there. Um, the other general category we call WILDS, or waking-induced lucid dreams. This is where the, the dreamer or the, the practitioner will shift from being fully awake into, let's say, a mild meditative-like um, state, and then deepen it into hypnagogia, and finally into sleep. <clears throat> WILDS um, take a bit more effort in trying to maintain and focus on the stream of consciousness as it shifts from being fully awake to falling asleep or to moving into sleep. Uh, where dials require a bit more critical thinking t of the state you're in, the reality you're in, in order to identify the fact that you're not awake, but frankly, in a dream. So the practice of wilding, as we call it, um, is usually working with being reflective on the transitions and the states of consciousness as you move off into sleep or into meditation. Um, playing with hypnagogia is a very, very strong practice. One of the techniques I used early on was to lay down on a carpeted floor and roll a towel up underneath my neck and then do my hypnagogic practice, transitioning, watching my consciousness wink in and out. And because it was physically uncomfortable, um, I would not fall asleep and often be pulled back from falling off into a stupor by the physical discomfort. And yet I could re-enter the hypnagogic experience and sort of walk the tightrope between consciousness and unconsciousness. That's one technique. Um, don't need to be as um, um, rigorous perhaps as I was on the floor using a chair. Uh, generally speaking, when you move into hypnagogia into stage one sleep, the muscles will become uh, relaxed and the head will wag. And so you can feel the head falling over whenever you start getting into stage one sleep. Pick it back up, re-enter, hypnagogia. Um, but one has to be interested in playing with and be attentive to the stream of consciousness as you fall off. It's a fun practice for those who are inclined. Others find it kind of boring or at least time consuming. In those cases, uh, dialing techniques may be more appropriate for that lucid dreamer. In fact, I personally categorize some of our lucid dreamers in being dominantly dialed or dominantly wild based upon their techniques and their personal motivation or dispositions. It seems to me that I've often heard that the, um, the light sleepers seem to have a little more natural ability for dialed since they're waking up during the night several times and grabbing the dreams a little more regularly, where sounder sleepers may have a little more of an inclination of watching at least the transitions of consciousness in and out.